With Borderlands 4 on the horizon, and it being 100% confirmed by developers that the new game will start off almost immediately after Borderlands 3's ending, a lot more traffic has been getting driven to the game. For a lot of people, Borderlands 3 is a much different game than it was when they last played 3, 4, or even 5 years ago now, and a lot of people are struggling to find damage at endgame. For people who have been following the meta and changes throughout the game's history, it seems pretty simple. But for returning players, it can be pretty daunting trying to navigate the new systems that have been implemented. Hey everyone, I'm Constant Canadian, and this is how to do more damage in Borderlands 3. If you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And if you really enjoyed this video, consider joining the membership program. 99 cents a month gets you these awesome sub badges and QD emotes, and for 4 dollars a month you get all that plus early access to most of my videos. Starting off with the most obvious form of extra damage at endgame, these are your anointments. Anointments in Borderlands 3 have become a pretty integral part of dealing damage at Mayhem 10 or 11, which by the way are the exact same minus the modifiers on Mayhem 11. Picking the correct anointments for your build is pretty much step 1 for starting your endgame journey. Yes, there are builds and setups where you can do all of the content with minimal setup and yes, even no anointments, but for the majority of builds you're going to need anointments to do any decent amount of damage at Mayhem 11. Now, there are 55 total anointments that a weapon can roll with, 65 with the Bloody Harvest event turned on, as well as 9 for grenades and 22 for shields. Naturally, some of the anointments aren't going to be the best. Honestly, most of the anointments are pretty much worthless past a certain point, but knowing specifically which anointments to look for is important. The most universally helpful anointments are your action skill and bonus elements on shields, grenades, and weapons. The important thing to remember is that these particular anointments won't stack when using the same elements, so it's best to use three separate elements on your shield, grenade, and weapon. There are other good anointments that, while less universal, are still great in certain situations, and with certain weapons. Just to name a few, while under 50% health, deal 100% bonus radiation damage, which is very good on a Deathless Mose build, deal 150% extra damage to enemies over 90% health, a great anointment for rocket launchers and sniper rifles, as well as on action skill end, gain 125% increased splash damage, and after exiting Iron Bear, gain 160% increased splash damage, which are both good for, well, splash damage. Another very important thing to consider when attempting to deal more damage is to diversify your build. I know I'm starting to sound like a finance YouTuber, but diversifying your different stat bonuses is very important for damage in Borderlands 3. This is by far one of the most common mistakes I see new or even more experienced players making. Now this can be pretty simple, a lot of people will overspend on survivability and max health, when in reality most characters only really need 1 or 2 points and their respective lifesteal skills. After that you can pretty much forget any other type of lifesteal or health regen. The only real exception to this rule is Flak, who doesn't have any lifesteal so it's more of a balancing act between health regen skills and damage skills, though there are other ways to survive with Flak but you just overall want to avoid overspending on your survivability regardless of your character. Where diversifying your build becomes a bit more complex is in your actual stat increases. There's a tendency for players to overbuild a specific stat in Borderlands 3. Like for example, people will play Zane and just build gun damage across every single skill and piece of gear. However, since Zane already gets up to 500% extra weapon damage from his violent momentum skill, other bonuses to weapon damage are essentially wasted. To put it simply, overbuilding any stat in Borderlands 3 will eventually get to the point of diminishing returns where you're losing a lot of potential damage by leaving your other stats, critical hit damage, elemental damage, splash damage, all damage, with next to no bonuses, when in most cases it's better to have your various skills, class mods, artifacts, etc. boosting multiple different stat types. To put it more complexly, if that's even a real word, let's say hypothetically you have a gun that deals 10,000 fire damage. If your class mod gives you, let's say, 35% weapon damage and your artifact gives you another 28% weapon damage, then these two bonuses will add together for 63% weapon damage, resulting in a final damage number of 16,300. Now let's say instead of weapon damage, the artifact gives us plus 25% fire damage. Now these two numbers multiply together for a total final damage of 17,200 damage. This right here is why it's fine to build for weapon damage on Amara, who has next to no weapon damage but lots of elemental damage in her trees, and yet on Zane, it's strongly recommended against building weapon damage. To recap, don't overbuild on one stat and leave the rest of your stats completely basic. It'll only hurt you in the long run. 
Now that the math lesson's over, time for some much simpler concepts. The most important of which is don't use gear that gives you almost nothing. I know that may seem pretty obvious, but especially in the case of class mods and artifacts, people can get very complacent and just run whatever without even looking at the passives. For example, a legendary static charge rocket boots might be a legendary, but unless it's boosting stats that are useful to your build, then it's essentially worthless garbage and you'd be better off with even a green snowdrift that boosts one relevant stat. This goes for class mods as well. A legendary deadeye might be cool and all, but with the correct passive stat rolls, even a random purple class mod could end up being more useful in the long run. This goes for item level as well. A level 55 phase zerker with bonus weapon and crit damage in all cases will be better for a gun build than a level 72 phase zerker with accuracy, projectile speed, and melee damage, as level doesn't affect anything for class mods aside from the passives they roll with. As is the case with everything in Borderlands 1, 2, 3, and the pre-sequel, just because an item glows orange doesn't actually mean it's going to be useful for your build. And it's very important, especially in Borderlands 3, to get at least one or two relevant stat bonuses on both your class mod and artifact. Yes, even if they already give you bonus damage. Element matching was a very important part of Borderlands 1 and 2's gameplay. And although anointments in Borderlands 3 have made switching weapons for a specific element a thing of the past, it's still an important thing to consider when fighting your way through the Borderlands. As previously mentioned, the most universally helpful anointments for your shield and grenades are the action skill and 50% elemental type damage for 10 second ones. However, if there's a specific boss you're struggling with, then consider using anoint that grants a different element. While cryo and radiation are the most generally useful elements in Borderlands 3, cryo is worthless against shields and radiation against armor. So consider swapping to shock and corrosive respectively if you're struggling with certain enemy types. A cryo anointment versus a shielded enemy is only half as powerful as it would be against a flesh enemy, so make sure you're matching up your anointments with the enemy types you're fighting. One of the simplest tips to get more damage in Borderlands 3 is just to simply use better weapons. The balance in Borderlands 3 is completely out of whack, and certain weapons, no matter how you build your character, just aren't going to cut it in later Mayhem levels. That's not to say you need to use the meta gear to succeed at Mayhem 11 but trying to make the 9-volt, AAA, or pain is power work is just going to leave you disappointed and frustrated. Personally, I absolutely love the Warlord Assault Rifle, but its damage is just nowhere near good enough for endgame activities. So if you're struggling with dealing damage, try watching some top 10s for the best weapons in the game from the last 2 or 3 years to get a better feel for what weapons you should be using. Another thing that people seem to forget about entirely is actually using your grenades. An unfortunate side effect of the new anointment system is that a lot of people just see grenades as mostly a stat buff now, but grenades are still very helpful outside of being an extra 50% cryo damage on demand. There are a lot of grenades in this game that while they don't help you so much with damage, can help you keep up DPS longer and make fighting significantly easier. Grenades like the Hunter Seeker, which can actually activate Flax to leave no trace skill for essentially passive ammo regen, or the Hex, which can keep Amara's lifesteal going even during reloads. Or hell, even the Quasar Grenade is useful for pulling enemies from behind barriers. But in my opinion, the most underrated grenade in Borderlands 3 has to be the It's Piss Grenade. This grenade can not only clear any status effect applied to you or your teammates, but will also make any enemy you throw it at take 20% increased damage from all sources for 6 seconds. This grenade is essentially just free damage, and the only real negative is that it can only drop from Thunk and Sloth in Conrad's Hold, so farming it can be tedious for sure. Now obviously Zane can't really utilize grenades on command like the others can, but even still, having a grenade mod that actually supports your build and playstyle is a massive help when you're struggling. At the end of the day, damage in Borderlands 3 is king. Hopefully these tips help you fully flush out your build to deal the absolute most damage it can. Thank you all so much for watching, have a fantastic day.